Hey there, everybody. My name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series, the best-selling Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. Um, and today, the subject of my video is the number one question that I'm getting asked by students. You might have noticed I have a little lesson link and a little discount code uh, in the description of all my YouTube videos, and I, I get about, about one or two students a week through YouTube. And the question that comes up is almost completely uh, predictable, which is, I don't know what to practice, how to practice, how to spend my time effectively. And I think it's actually really interesting because in the past, past few years, there's been this explosion of content. <laughs> this channel has been a proud part of it, actually a mixed emotions part of it, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, and it's kind of beautiful because anybody all over, over the world can search any subjects and hopefully find some good instruction. Probably find a lot of bad instruction too. Um, probably some bad instruction by me. I'm still learning. Anyway, people um, are feeling overwhelmed and they want to get better, but they're not sure how. I don't have a magic bullet answer, but I wanted to give you my, my TED talk on the subject uh, so that you can save money on lessons with me. Uh, or maybe you'll be inspired to uh, get kind of, you know, sign up and, and get a personalized practice plan, which you're welcome to do. Um, okay, so I just wanted to, to put forth this theory before anybody else does so I can copyright it, that the model of being a student of jazz, amateur, collegiate, um, even professional, you know, and learning has really changed because back in the day, back in the day, even in my day, and I'm not that, that old, uh, students really had to be a, be seekers of information, right? Um, you had to find your local teacher, your local pianist, your local improviser, and you had to go out into the world. <laughs> Uh, or maybe you had to find a, find a book, which was not necessarily that easy to do. Bookstores probably didn't carry books about jazz. You had to like find a DVD of somebody, et cetera. Okay. Um, and I know, especially in, in countries who speak certain languages, it was really hard to find any information. You know, if you didn't, if you lived in, I don't know, Asia, uh, it was almost impossible to find instruction in your, in your language or a local person. Um, but that's obviously changed. I mean, you've got your open studio, you've got your tone base, you've got YouTube, you've got Instagram, you've got, you know. Um, and so the challenge now for students is, in my opinion, to be a filter, to be an effective filter and figure out what is necessary right now and what can I tune out. And this is hard because I think we all, it's only natural to have the like dog chasing squirrels like feeling with everything in our lives right of like oh that's interesting i'm gonna go over there oh that's interesting um the other metaphor that i sometimes use uh is uh shiny object syndrome <laughs> like oh i just heard this and i'm gonna transcribe this oh but this also seems pretty interesting maybe i'll stop that transcription four bars in and go to this other transcription um and oh uh you know I'm trying to decide what to do, but there's five versions on YouTube and uh, there's, just so, there's just so much out there, right? Um, and obviously it's a mixed bag unless you're a good filter. You need to be a good funnel, keep stuff out. And I have some recommendations as to how to do that. First of all, I would keep a ranked list of things that you want to work on. Because the latest thing that I came out with in my video, the latest thing person X told you about the really cool new theory thing that you learned, that might not be a priority. And I understand the impulse that you don't wanna miss something that seems really cool. And so I would add it to a list, put a link in if you, know, if you want, if you don't think you can find it again, um, and put it in some order of like, what is the most important to me? So that you always know, okay, that's, I like that that's important, but it's really only number 22 right now. I still need to think about numbers one through three, <laughs> right? So keep it, keep it on a list. That'll make you feel like you're not losing track of it. Um, but then focus on the top three or four things on that list. 
Second thing is I recommend changing out practice routines about once a month. Think about you know every three, four, five weeks. That's probably a good length to change practice routines. Don't tackle a new thing every week because you're not going to master anything. Now this is hard with jazz because we never master anything. We can always do the same thing faster or over a harder tune or with a different style of left hand. So um, I get it that it's not like a classical study where you can say, okay, I can play that Beethoven sonata. <laughs> I performed it, I'm done. Um, but once a month, I think is, you know, you should dedicate yourself to a set of things once a month. Okay. And I'm going to put a link. I, I made a, a video about my ideal jazz practice routine. Uh, it has four parts, so I would recommend uh, if, if you need it, use that as a framework. Um, I'm also going to recommend set specific goals. And everybody who I talk to, I'm like, what are your goals? They're like, well, I want to be able to show up to a jam session, comp for somebody, play a good solo. I also would like to be able to play solo piano so I can play for myself. Um, and it's like, that's great. Those are good goals, but you're going to have to also zero in and set more specific goals, right? More short term goals and also more measurable goals so that we can feel good about ourselves. So it could be a monthly goal of, you know, I want to be able to play this lick in all 12 keys at this tempo. Uh, it could be a performance goal. Like by the end of the month, I'm going to record a video of myself playing the head of this tune solo piano could be a transcription goal. Um, but you're gonna have to zero in on goals because these big goals are good and useful, but um, they're not really gonna be that effective for learning. Um, to me, nothing can replace community. And community could mean a lot of things. It could mean that you have a little rhythm section that you like to play with and you get together once per week. It could mean that uh, you have a group of pianists who um, who you, you get together and you all play a solo piano performance for each other once a month. It could mean that you are on something like Open Studio or Piano with Johnny and you post to their community page. Um, ideally, in person is, is, you know, best, but community gives you people to bounce ideas off. It gives you people to get inspired by. It gives you people um, to reflect on. Um, and very importantly, it gives you deadlines. I still remember that, you know, when I lived in New York, it was my best period for learning because every two weeks, my teacher would have a studio class and there were no rules. There was no feedback in studio class, but everybody had to play. And so you always had to have something to play. Um, and there's nothing better than that. That's one of the reasons that going to school is so great. It's dumb. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean that school is dumb, but like it's a dumb reason to go to school to have a deadline, but it's pretty effective. When I teach my, my classes at Fullerton College, to me, the best, the most useful thing I can do is have assignments with deadlines that students have to meet. Um, and then lastly, <laughs> you know, know when to tune out. Of course, do I want views? Do I have visions of becoming the greatest superstar in YouTube history? <laughs> Can't you tell that of course I do? Um, but. I certainly would not want to do it at the detriment of anybody's education. And if watching every one of my videos, watching every one of, um, you know, Chad LB's Instagram videos that come out, you know, is giving you, is contributing to shiny object syndrome, is, is making you distracted or making you stressed or making you feel like you're not doing enough in a certain area, then unfollow, don't unsubscribe from me. That would just be rude. But don't click. Um, you could leave it on the background with the, with it muted, so that I still get that sweet, sweet YouTube cash. Um, but you know, have some self discipline about when when to tune out. Um, I kind of proudly don't know a lot of the Instagram musicians that that people know. Um, I like to listen to the same albums over and over again, partially just kind of I'm an old person, um, but partially because that's when you get into them in real depth and. I think it's worth saying that we all need to find our balance of depth and breadth together. And I think our online system encourages breadth, encourages us to know a little bit about a lot of things. It doesn't work so well. 
when it comes to jazz. <laughs> um, you know, we need to have that repeated practice because jazz piano is freaking hard. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I think it's kind of implicit in everything that I've said, but don't try to do everything at once. Right? Jazz piano is this kind of uniquely difficult <laughs> thing because we can play solo, we need to be good at comping, we can be great improvisers, we need to be able to accompany vocalists, we want to be able to play like Bill Evans, we want to be able to play like Oscar Peterson, Thelonious Monk, we need to play in a big band. I mean, there's so many different variables to jazz piano. And that's not even counting if you want to play some classical piano too. Like, it's just, it's an intense, intensely difficult thing to do. So uh, it's crazy to try to play whack-a-mole, <laughs> right? You're like, oh no, uh, I want to play solo piano. Ugh, I want to play duo with a vocalist. Ah, I want to, you know, be a, I want to lead my own trio. Uh, you know, there's only so much whack-a-mole <laughs> playing that we can do. It's not going to be productive instead of staying focused on, a, like I said, on a set of goals for a month. So that's my TED talk. Um, I hope that you guys are finding satisfaction in your practice and feeling like you have good improvements and that this video contributed. I'm going to play a little music because I hate just talking for a whole video. Uh, what should I play? Maybe I'll play um, Monk's Dream. How about that? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I will do this so that you can see the keys a little better. <laughs> Stay this long, comment, 
uh, Mysterioso.